I'm Colin Stagnito, and I'm here with Jason Hughes with Garmin. And I, so I've heard a lot about the Garmin G3000 Prime, brand new th third generation integrated uh, avionics system. And uh, I would love for you to walk me through a demo of us flying from, we're here at NBA in Las Vegas, let's fly to somewhere in Colorado. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. Well, let's, let's see if we built it right and it's intuitive for you. All right. All right. The thought process behind initialization is just getting the aircraft ready to fly. So what we've added basically is a series of tabs that have little asterisks in the top left corner saying, hey, I, I need to have data entered into, my, into me. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a tab with a corresponding button that has that same indication on it. So here you'll see the flight plan and cruise altitude are required. Gotcha. Um, and so we can press that button and start loading our flight plan in. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Let's press our flight plan. Let's add our origin. We're here at uh, Las Vegas. Yep. Okay. All right. And then our destination. Mm -hmm. All right. So I, how about just DEN? That sounds great. Uh, all right. So now we've got an A to B flight plan. And I like to press this little linked view button. Go ahead and press that for the me. The map? Yeah. Okay. You'll see up here. It oh, gives us a nice a sense end to of, end am I going in the direction that I'm, I'm right. going, wanting to go? That's right. And if we're going to add, add some weather. Add some weather, yeah. Okay. So now we may want to add maybe a procedure leaving. Mm -hmm. This is, yeah, so departing out of LES. Yep. Um, and I'm going to press this button a couple times to get back to this departure view. Gotcha. So this shows all the ways out of Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. a gidget, NITS 3, something like that. You can try a gidget. Okay. A gidget 2. All right, and, and the transition. Burkin or Turker, whichever okay. you like. Turker, okay. Now this page lets you kind of pick out which runway we're going to take off. This filters all the runways by what's what's serviced by Gidget 2. Okay. So Gidget 2 service looks like pretty much everything. Wow. Yeah, pretty yeah. So And who knows? So we'll right. just pick one. Okay. All right, and, and then load left. it. And then load it. Okay. So now we have that uh, procedure in. Okay. So now uh, we want to allow an arrival into Denver. Okay. So Similar picture showing up here. Okay. And uh, zooming out, you can kind of see where we are. Oh, yeah, I really, I love the ability to do this. So it looks like powder or yeah. ski okay. might be a, a good arrival for us. Okay. Yeah, I love it, powder. And so junction or um, I can't remember the name of that VR or Blue Mesa. Okay. Yeah, whatever you like. Okay. And this will filter us by runways. And okay. this shows some wind conditions, so oh. you'll notice that oh, there probably... You go. So we probably want this one here, I guess. Uh, yeah, we can scan down. Any one of them, probably. Well, look, oh, look at that. Yeah, okay, and that's, that? those are both 12,000 foot runway, so yeah, 2625, yep. and you can load that in. Mm -hmm. And so now we have a nice flight plan. You press that link view again. Okay. shows us end to end, point to point, mm -hmm. Turker to Junction. Yeah, you can pinch on it, zoom it, look it around. Yeah. Nice. We also have yeah. user interface buttons on the on on the on the interface here that allows you to walk through each waypoint as well. You'll notice as I press these oh, yeah. buttons, it's allowing us to kind of walk. We can see an altitude eleven five and a two below yeah, fifty there, altitudes, yeah. mm -hmm. and just kind of brief us on what's going on through here. Maybe some weather along the way. Um, looking at for any speed or altitude constraints on the way in. Looks like everything's pretty clear. Nothing going on there. And then we're back to the airport. And now we've taken care of the flight plan. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're back to setup. So cruise altitude is the next thing we need. Okay. So you were you put in 23,000 before. Yeah, 23,000. That'll work. Works for me. Okay. All right, so, so the setup so tab. So again, we're always looking for anything that has a little triangle and the asterisk that we need to still set up. That's correct. Okay. So weight and balance is kind of next. Mm -hmm. And it just needs a fuel on board. And let's just put like 2,000 pounds. Okay. Um, maybe 1,000. Yeah, so oh. let's go with a thousand. Okay. <laughs> it tells us that's too much. That's nice. All right, so now it's stopping. Okay. And with the link view on this one, you can actually see loading graphs. So you can actually work your pilot in your passenger situation. Mm. Pressing that button one more time will switch you over to the weight and balance graph. Wow. You can see a visual of how that looks, how the loading looks. Mm. And if you want to keep this graph up and load down here, you've got a loading button here as well. So you can work the loading, move the graphing or graph around. Gotcha. And that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So this system prime can support told. <clears throat> and so if it has a told database, which we don't have in here today, okay. it would automatically calculate the takeoff distance you need based on wind mm -hmm. and runway conditions. We're going to go ahead and just type something in for today. What do you think? What's going to satisfy? 2,500 feet. Okay. Let's just put... Okay, and just slide down slightly. We got a, we got an indication of the of the runway mm -hmm. here. 
We've got our V speeds. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got an ability to bring in the winds if there were any. Um, and then our flaps 15, will be, settings will be flaps 15 today. Okay. We can also hit, a, hit that diagram button and see a view of that takeoff. So as we brief it together as a team, we can say we need 2,500 feet. Holly around Tango is where we expect to be rotating. Whiskey Tango, somewhere in that area. If we're not, might want to think about aborting. We can exit to Sierra, November, might be an opportunity for us to get off this runway. Mm-hmm. Um, and also on the right side, we'll see an indication of the winds, very similar to what you see down here. And then just kind of briefing through the, the Torahs, availables, <clears throat> elevation, obviously you're gonna, I want to see that in your altitude tape. And then we've got a tiny bit of a slope down for this runway. So it kind of gives you some situation with the runway. Yeah, runway. nice. And now that tab, oh, let's accept the V-speeds real quick. Boom, okay. Emergency return. So this is a newer feature. So the philosophy or the thought behind this is what are we going to do if something were to occur on takeoff? Mm-hmm. Where are we going to go? We're going to get that established now so we're not having to fool with it later, right? And the system is going to do two things for us. It's going to basically set that as our destination, load that procedure, and send the V speeds. Mm-hmm. So it's going to pull the t- takeoff speeds and send those landing speeds with one button press. So it kind of gets us ready to do to come into a different airport or come back to where we took off from. So we can kind of get that set up and you know you could potentially look at a map, see where you might want to go uh, on the um, <clears throat> if if you needed to come back, we're taking off to the north, there's uh, yeah, North Las Vegas. North Las Vegas yeah. there. So if we wanted to go there, KVGT, we can just type that in there as our destination. Okay. Uh, it was G V T? Uh, K V G T. V G T. Okay. So there is KVGT, and we'll, we'll load up a visual. A visual seven. Yep, seven sounds good. So that means we're going to be coming around the far side of the airport, intercepting an inbound, and uh, flying in from the west to the east with runway seven. Hmm. The last thing we need to do is tell it how much distance we need. So let's put in 1,200 feet or so. And then once again, we can kind of brief that diagram. We can talk about what that looks like. You can go ahead and press the links view. <clears throat> talk about, hey, this is a 5,000 foot runway. We'll need 1,200 foot of it. We'll have 3,800 foot left. The winds are fairly calm today. There is a crossing runway on the approach end. And then the taxiways are going to be on our right. So that's what we'll be exiting to. So now our mental model is prepared. We're flying basically north to the to northwest, entering our left downwind, entering into that runway pattern for this runway. So a lot of that thing is now taken off our mind. And when it, hopefully nothing will happen. But if it right. does, we're ready to go. Yeah. And then the last tab is the airframe tab, and this is where our, we'll work with our airframes to come up with what makes sense for their aircraft. So this is kind of blank for now. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I love the flow of it. I love how it, it works through very logically, and I especially like what you need to, to enter. It's very obvious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now there, we can see our flight. We can see it ready to go. Yeah. Nice flight. I'll let you press the options button. Okay. And hit info. Here we are, Las Vegas. Because we can do some situation where it's here. We're at 2,100 yeah. feet. Uh, frequencies, yeah, because, right? Let's throw the ATIS into uh, COM2 active, and we'll pretend like we're listening to it, writing down information, X-ray, whatever it happens to be. Cool, sounds good. Let's throw clearance into COM2 active. Let's throw ground into COM2 standby, or uh, yeah, probably ground COM2 standby. Let's get tower into COM1. Yeah. And then maybe uh, departure control will be. Um, there yeah, okay. and they'll give us two when we get our when we get our clearance. But we can, if we've been here before, we kind of kind of know what you're going to get. So right. You've quickly loaded all your frequencies. Yeah. Pretty pretty seamlessly. Mm-hmm. So we can go. Actually, you can, you can click the weather tab, and and if the airport happens to have digital ATIS, click down just a little bit, and there, this one happens mm-hmm. to have it. Go ahead and press that. We actually get the digital mm-hmm. ATIS from from uh, from this app from Flight Plan. So it is actually information uniform. Yeah. And uh, this is CANS. This is kind of old, obviously. Um, but this is how you would get your digital ATIS. Nice. So you can press flight plan and go right back to flight plan. You can press the back button. Uh, and which one was the flight plan? I Bottom bu- left corner. OK, it is that right. That's the home page. Yeah, yeah gotcha. That's kind of where you want to be. Right. So back to the top here, we've got the taxi route. Let's go ahead and get our taxi route in. And uh, if you can press the link view. And what that does is allow us to get a nice view of this airport without interrupting our map. Our map is kind of set up for what we want to do for takeoff. So when we get on the takeoff roll, I don't want to be fumbling around the maps. Yeah. I want to set this up how I want it now and then kind of shift in this kind of safe taxi view mm. that's just temporary. Because as soon as I press flight plan, 
boop, it's going to go back to the flight plan and, right. and move, remove that taxi routing. So anyway, back to taxi route, and the philosophy is then uh, <clears throat> we have auto route, and that works obviously best when you are dealing with an uncontrolled airport or the tower's closed, right? Right. And LES, that's not really a thing. The city never sleeps. No doubt. So um, we can type in. Uh, potentially what, Charlie Delta Bravo Echo might get us there pretty pretty well. Or uh, maybe just Charlie Delta Bravo, actually. So that's kind of showing you our route, mm -hmm. so. Um, hmm. All right, and then if we were to cross, let me get, um, let me put Hotel 3 in there just to kind of get it to show like that taxi route there. Now this is a unique runway, but uh, it gets us there and that's the primary function of this app, is to help us in these really complicated situations know where we need to go. And as we as we turn the airplane around, you'll see the synthetic vision give us a, you know, this 3D safe taxi view of that taxi route. Mm -hmm. I'm going to slowly bring us forward. As we get closer, you'll see these lines will turn magenta. As we, as we taxi in here, you know, you got your map up, uh, you've got a dedicated taxiway view. Yes. Yeah, it turns the magenta there. Yep, there it goes. Now it's going to go off because I'm not, I'm not on the rudders here. Right. Um, so that kind of gives you an example yeah, of how that works. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So I'm going to pause here and jump over to that runway, if you don't mind. Now before we do, can I just comment on the engine yeah. instruments? So this um, looks a lot like the G3X. G3X <laughs> Touch, yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. um, you know, and I, I was playing with it over at the other side here. Okay, so anything that's gray. That's okay. our button style. But yeah, yeah, anything with gray rounded corners, yep, there is so a button. Fuel information, gear. Uh -huh. Yeah, and this will be pressure. very, very specific to the airframe yeah, that I can this imagine. goes in, right? right? But it does flatten the information architecture, right? You're not having to dig yeah. down necessarily so deep. Uh, menu structures are just flattened yeah. out. I so love how simple this is. You can just quickly get to your environmental. As your passengers right. are kind of cold, you yeah. can just bump it up a little bit. I can turn the temperature up by 28, a little bit yeah. warm. Um, but you get the idea. So and we so can... we saw the cockpit mock-up of the CJ4 Gen 3, mm -hmm. and so theirs is going to be all specific to that aircraft. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And yeah. this is kind of modeled after that a little bit. We're, right. we're working with those guys to yeah. get the right solution for gotcha. them. Gotcha. So as it's going into the map, as it creeps onto a runway, the logic triggers to go into flight mode. Mm -hmm. So, and that that is how we get in and out of flight mode. It's automatic. Okay. So now we're kind of ready to go. We can obviously switch over to the tower and all the buttons from G3000 are all still the same. You still touch the top, swap it in. Right. Uh, the keyboards are, are pretty much like they were, always been. They're just aesthetically changed. We do have quick access to a, a set of uh, frequencies that might be very valuable to you. Um, so those are all, always available to you. And so, yeah, you can transfer that right in there. And of course, we need probably should be in tower right now. And once again, flight plan is right there at your fingertips. If you're wondering where flight plan went, it's always right there. I don't mm -hmm. have to go home, flight plan. It's always right there. It is the new home. Gotcha. Map, always the bottom left. You've got available, you get, you get right to your map. Mm -hmm. Now the app menu is, is kind of the everything else, right? Mm -hmm. So you'll see that the one on the PDUs, the primary display units are slightly- A little simplified. Simplified, yeah. it's mm -hmm. really thinking about consuming information, traffic, weather maps, yeah. flight plan, audio, charts. Yeah. This Those, has more the look of, of the previous home screen. Yeah, these are yeah. kind of like the previous home exactly. screens. We want to keep, I mean, most people who have interacted with the system within 20 minutes are like, oh, this is still G3000. Right. We've Designing done a lot of like evaluations. That. We brought pilots in, yeah. uh, single pilots, crews, brought them in. We'd run through flight scenarios. Right. Um, we, we pretty much provide them about an hour and a half of training. Uh, we do uh, PowerPoint for like 45 minutes and then a quick flight. And yeah. then we set them on, on their own and they fly from uh, LA, uh, X to LES, and all they have is air traffic control. So they've shown us some pain points. What you're right. seeing today is actually the fruit of all that effort. Great. So okay. the emergency return button being right here at the top level is something that came from those evaluations. Mm. Um, touchable EIS, some of those things came from uh, some of those evaluations. I need to get to these controls faster. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, I can see all the effort that was put into the thought process behind this. Yeah. We are, we are pretty proud of it. Uh, I'm really proud of it. I think it turned out really well. I think it's a really good looking system. And uh, a lot of, I think it's going to help a lot of folks make life a lot easier. Uh, it's, it's great for situational awareness. Yeah. And I love the reminders and you can't step through certain things without, you, know, you can't forget. I mean, it forces you yeah. to make sure that you're doing something that makes sense. It makes sense. So, fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate the yeah. demo. You bet. Thanks for coming.